Hey Jacob, um, hope you're doing fine. I got your question. Thank you for comment. It is a good question about non-union, and um, I'm sorry that you're in the same position that I was in. Uh, because it's an important question, I will put some thought into it, write some points down, and I will try to make a video later today. I'm at the ship here, um, so I I'm gonna find some quiet place today, and I'm gonna write down the points and make a video about it and upload. I hope that you heal and you um, get on the road to recovery like I was. There was a phase that I went through that was fairly difficult for me, so I'll make sure that I cover all those things. What was going through my mind and what are all the different things that I did. So, um, see you in a bit. Okay, so I compiled some notes uh, and here are my thoughts. So, <clears throat> the worst case scenario for any leg lengthening patient uh, would be non-union. Non-union could be like one of the worst things that can happen to you. And in my case, I had it all planned. When I had my surgery, I knew exactly uh, you know, when I'm gonna come back to Baltimore, when I'm gonna get my rods out, the nails out, and I'm gonna move on with my life and everything gonna be so hunky-dory. And all that plan went haywire when, you know, I had a non-union scare. A year turned into two years and then two and a half years. Um, my mental state was degrading it looked like uh, um, it was a, it, honestly it was a comical situation because I would visit uh, Dr. Asiag every like three four months we would do an x-ray um, and after we do an x-ray I would hope for the best I would think like you know the callus would have been formed and I, you know, I can move on with my life, but nope, it was, it would be better, but not as much. I mean, I still, there still would be this gap that we would be staring at in x-rays. I didn't know what to do, you know, so I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, every single time, every couple of months, I would hope for the best, but uh, the improvement was very, very slow. I was not getting anywhere. Um, so what happened was because of these videos making these videos the one benefit is a lot of people watch these and a lot of people contacted me privately a lot of people commented and a lot of people give ideas on what they think I should be doing so what I s did was I started to compile every single idea that I received so I thought okay maybe I can do that so here here is all the ideas that I wrote down that I followed. So, number one was exercise. So I, I started to, I have a treadmill at home, I have a, a, a mini gym. So I was doing squats with weights. I started to walk. I think I made a couple of videos about that. Um, so I was doing squats, but not like uh, something that a bodybuilders would do. I was doing squats as much as my body would take and I was uh, holding like sometimes 25 pounds, 20 pounds. I also have 50 pound dumbbells, but I only went up to like 25. So I would do squats with weights. I would walk daily. Um, I started to take vitamins. In vitamins, I was taking calcium, uh, CoQ10, and uh, vitamin E. So uh, these three every single day. Uh, somebody also said it's because my legs are not getting enough sun. And because of that, my bone growth or improvement is very, very slow. So, hey, I, I'm on a ship right now. I go to Caribbean at least every couple of months. So I then go to Bahamas and you know, Bahamas is like sunny all the time. So I was getting ample sun. So sun was not a problem. And then final advice, it was funny one. Somebody said, hey, um, maybe you should take uh, uh, Viagra. 
and it was uh, and they said hey hear me out so the main uh, the main way uh, sildenafil or viagra how it works uh, or cialis is how they work is they open your blood vessels i'm guessing and they let the more blood flow to different parts of the body and because that includes your penis it treats erectile dysfunction if you're aroused so the idea was that if i take cialis viagra sildenafil something like that it will open up my blood vessels and it will move extra blood to my legs okay hey it doesn't matter it's viagra or anything when you're going through non union scare you would take anything so i said okay i went to my doctor i asked my doctor to prescribe me uh cialis or viagra the doctor uh he did the test the blood tests cuz he wouldn't just uh, prescribe me and he said well everything is coming out normal i don't think you need it he was scared that i would abuse it and of course i'm not want to use it for recreational purposes so i went to that website hims.com and i i ordered it from there uh and it was funny it, it was uh, it gave me a headache and a flu like symptoms um so i don't know if it worked or not but i my point of telling you that is i even used that so i tried all the ideas and finally with time so all this time dr asiag was consistent with his advice he kept saying give this time you're healing but you're healing very very slowly uh mind you that i was also i was panicking so much that at one point i was like well if i have to get another surgery to do like a mesh uh fit bone or whatever you know cadaver or cadaver's bone or whatever you want to do i'm up for it so i was up for all the ideas i was panicking so much i was ready to spend money on the surgery dr asiag was the one who calmed me down and he said listen you are improving it's just that you're improving very very slowly so just wait give it some time and then we will see how you're doing it and he He asked me to wait at least 6 7 months and if nothing happens fine we'll do the surgery. I listened to him and then luckily things were looking good enough that we knew that you know eventually I will I will be normal. So telling you all of this my advice to you is first of all follow what your doctor is saying. Your surgeon uh is is a specialist in these things and would have seen all these cases so whatever your surgeon is saying listen to your doctor and follow that advice second i do believe that uh our medical field is not still not advanced enough that it can answer every single question i don't think that we have figured out why some people are healing so slowly compared to others uh people like you and I we why my legs healed so slowly why i had non union uh why my callus is not forming as quick as some other people that you see their diaries i don't know and i don't think that medical field knows i can tell you uh, the reason of me saying that is because i can tell you with confidence that the doctors in the United States are very risk averse um especially for leg lengthening procedure so if in the beginning if they can figure out using a test or any symptoms that you are at risk of non union because of your type or something trust me they will be very hesitant to do the surgery on you because they do not want to take unnecessary risk so i don't think that medical field had figured it out yet on why some of us uh are slow in our in our recovery um i do have a familial history of high cholesterol that means in my family we have high cholesterol even though um 
we don't really necessarily have a high cholesterol rich diet. I don't eat like, you know, um, seed oil. I primarily use uh, olive oil or avocado oil or ghee. But still, I have a familiar uh, history of high cholesterol. A lot of people from Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia, like India, Pakistan, or Mexico, uh, a lot of people who look like me have uh, high cholesterol. And then combine that with the Middle East, well, those people uh, have high cholesterol as well. So I have a double whammy. So that's why, maybe that's one of the reasons, I don't know. The other one, in summary is, uh, the other one I can think of is uh, two things. One is diabetes and uh, smoking. Um, the smoking part came in when I was talking about Viagra with my friend. So when, you know when he said that uh, if you take Sildenafil, Cialis or Viagra, anything like that, it opens up your blood vessels? Well, the smoking works the opposite. It, it shrinks your blood vessels or contracts them, which is why uh, smokers have hard time recovering. Uh, I used to smoke and I quit about three months, uh, well, uh, not smoke smoke, I used to take uh, uh, nicotine gum. And I'm still chewing the gum, but that's not nicotine. I, I, I chew regular gum now but I was hooked on nicotine gum. That's how I got off of cigarettes, but unfortunately got hooked on nicotine gum. And I was taking a lot of gum. Um, but then I even stopped taking those uh, because I was scared that nicotine will adversely affect uh, my recovery. Uh, other than smoking, I heard that diabetics, they have hard time recovering. So uh, I'm not diabetic. But uh, I don't know. So in summary, I would say exercise, walk, squat. Don't overdo it, but as much as your body allows. Take vitamins, don't smoke. Uh, be in high spirits. Um, I know that this is a tough time. I can tell you, I was, I would have, I would have done anything. Anybody would have come to me at that time like hey do this or do that and you will be fixed I'll do anything you know I was some days I was so much panicking because I was like oh shit you know like I did this surgery and I basically effed myself and now I'm gonna stuck with these nails in my body and the problem with having your nails stuck in your body is because you know you can't have these MRIs anything magnetic so that was, that was my scare, that I just effed myself, like messed up my body. But luckily everything worked out. Um, it, was, it took some time, but um, I was able to take the rods out. I'm really thankful to Dr. Asiak that he kept me calm. He kept asking me to wait, wait, wait. And he actually saved me from another surgery. I was ready to pay. If he would have asked me for the money, I would have given him gone in for the surgery, gotten, you know, uh, anything that he would have recommended. So, I, I, I firmly believe that I, I don't think that a medical field has figured out why some people uh, are at risk. Oh, um, so here's the funny thing. I actually met a girl at Dr. Asiak's clinic. She was waiting in the waiting area and her dad actually flagged me and he said, you know, do you have a second talk to my daughter? And I, I thought that she was a leg lengthening patient, you know, maybe she saw him out of my videos and she wanted to talk, so I stopped there. And that was not the case. What she wanted to know, she had an external asphyxiator on her, on her legs, uh, one of her legs. And she said, uh, I wanted to know who's your doctor and I said Dr. Asiag and she said I see that you're walking um, so do you have the your your fixator in your leg like why you're getting it and I said well I have internal nails so you don't see it but it's basically just like your external fixator 
and I have it for cosmetic purposes. And I ask her, why is she there? Well, she had broken her leg like three years ago and her leg, the bone was still not connecting to each other. Like it was not uh, healing. So as a last resort, she was visiting Dr. Asiak. My point of telling you that is, is that leg lengthening is not the only reason that you would have a non-union. It's just some of us have tendency to heal very, very slowly. And she broke her leg and having a hard time uh, healing. So that's why they put the external fixator on her. She had only one leg. So I hope that this information was helpful. Just hang in there and uh, don't lose hope. Don't panic. It will be fine. I, I can tell you this. I mean, God forbid if, if uh, your non-union is not healing, there are ways. You know the surgeries that I'm talking about? Like uh, mesh, uh, putting some cadaver bone or other things in the in the leg. I mean, there's many ways to heal it. It's just that Dr. Asia kept telling me, you don't need a surgery, just wait. Um, so I waited. But had I not healed, there are different ways. So I don't want you to panic. Rest assured that there are ways to deal with the situation. Um, so I hope that this information was helpful. I have been compiling um, lessons that I have learned from this surgery. I will upload them in the separate video. Um, so watch out for that. Uh, since my last video, some updates, things have, got, things have gotten back to normal. I used to be afraid of slides. I'm talking like water slides, you know, here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can see right there. Those are the big water slides here on this carnival ship. I used to actually be, after the surgery, I was actually scared of them. And this uh, cruise is the first time that I'm not scared anymore, I feel normal. I actually used my GoPro and made a video of me going down the slide. I'm gonna upload just in this same video. than that pain has got uh, the, I used to get the pain in my leg like a random pain um, that has gone away uh, so I have ha not had a pain um, I visited Nassau uh, Freeport and uh, and uh, Half Moon Cay and all three places I swam in the ocean man it was a good feeling with the legs like that you can you know you push on the sand you walk in the water and you feel really good. So I felt as normal as it, I can be. Uh, and I tell you, it's a good feeling. So uh, good luck to you. Thank you for asking the question. Stay tuned for the lessons video and uh, wish you all the best, man. I mean, I, I feel for you because I've been there. I know how it felt. So take care. All right, bye.
Yeah, I'm going to go. 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 Yeah